Um, so we decided we were brainstorming and we're like, well, what are some scary sound, what scary teams in college and sort of connecting them to some characters here. So we've got some characters, some li a list here of some Do. teams that we sort of can think about when you look ahead to the 2020 year that we sort of want to compare them to. What, what, which so character do we start with? We're going to start with the ghost. Okay. The team that maybe some people don't believe in as we mm. enter 2020, but some people firmly do. Right. That's that's kind of where you're either on one side or the other with a ghost. With ghosts, yes. And we're going to go with Penn. Ooh, Penn. Why is that, Travis? Oh, with the Quakers, you look at everything they did. Ended up in the top five in the country yeah. after last year. Lost that dramatic game in the quarterfinals. Very well could have been a championship weekend team. But they lose a lot. You, you mm -hmm. lose Simon Mathias, who was such a big part of that team last year as a, as a senior leader. Uh, Tyler Dunn, such a physical presence in the midfield. Alex Rosner's gone. Reed Junkin uh, uh, in goal. He has also moved on. But when you look at what they bring back, Sam Hanley was, if not the best, one of the best freshmen in the entire country. Kyle Gallagher was stellar at the faceoff. Act. We watched what he did against mm -hmm. TD Erlin yeah. in the times Each, that they. Every time they battled, they, he held his own. More exactly. Than, more, more than held his own. One or twice. Once so or twice. Those pieces are great. They've got uh, BJ Ferrari, who's a terrific long pole in the in the midfield. They've got a bunch back on defense. They bring back more than I think some people might give them credit for. Right. Look out for the Quakers. Just, I am a believer in Penn. Just like how ghosts are maybe have a little bit more of a semblance than you might give them credit for. So, do you believe in ghosts? I believe in Penn, <laughs> but not ghosts. Okay. I, I think I think ghosts. Are, I've watched some of those specials on television, right? With the ghosts. Watch the Haunting of Hill House a little bit with my wife. Mm. Freaky. Not yeah. something There's I'm into. There's some weird stuff going on yeah. out there with the anyway. spirits, as they say. All right. Next, we're going with Frankenstein and Doctor Frankenstein and his monster. You think about how the monster was formed and the sort of different pieces coming together, and for. My perspective, that's sort of Syracuse this year. And Fair. you think of bringing in Chase Galen, of course, that is the big headline, number 22, the whole nine yards. But then you also think about bringing back Tucker Dordovic, who they didn't have all of last year. And I think you bring those two guys together, you're almost creating a monster, if you will. An if offensive I, an juggernaut. An offensive juggernaut where you're even changing a little bit of the way they do things as a team. And that's sort of that got that scary feeling to it that hmm. they're putting some of these pieces together and you, you obviously you remove some from last year's team but not a ton and I sort of like what is going to be coming together and they're going to be a team to I, I think a lot of people can imagine and you also bring in Pat March yeah is another, new, another piece new piece who has done a lot in the recruiting game already and at the same time is also going to create a very interesting offense yep. with, with those pieces so you sort of bring all that together to form this new nucleus at Syracuse that I, a lot of people think is going to pay dividends uh, Chase Scanlon already a cover boy of U.S. Lacrosse magazine and you get that 22 on your chest expectations are high man that's a heavy jersey <laughs> <laughs> it may feel the same weight but it's a lot heavier yeah. when you put that thing on feels a little different inside all right let's Let's move on. Uh, the next one is the boogeyman. Ooh, the boogeyman. The one that everybody's afraid of. Yeah. Uh, you're always afraid of the boogeyman. And, um, yeah, hence the name. I think most people in the country are afraid of Penn State's offense. Mm, yeah. When I was talking to, to Lars Tiffany about Penn State after their scrimmage earlier this fall, he just said, wow. <laughs> when I asked him about playing Penn State, he's like, wow, they are a really good team. I mean, you think about what they did last year with all those pieces. Granny Mento at that point was coming back from injury, so you weren't sure how healthy he was, and he took a little while to get going. Mac O'Keefe. This team brings back, like, everybody, and all those pieces have a year where they have had it clicking. Hmm. All those pieces played together almost perfectly a year ago, and now they're back for another go at it. How often do you get that where you have an offense that was that good that all comes back again? Yeah. That is so incredible, and I just I cannot wait to see how good this offense is. And the scary part comes in where you, you can go and play Penn State, whether wherever it is, a home or on the road, and they can hang 20 on you. You, you know Easily. what I mean? That's the scary part. You know, some other like Virginia, we know is going to be really good and scary, but they're not. A, I don't think they're. They could, but at the could. same time, Penn State feels like more. Hey, they'll drop 20 out of drop of a hat. And things can get out of hand very, very quickly. Like, I feel like it will be more of a surprise if Penn State doesn't score 15 goals almost every game mm. than if they do. 
Yeah. Whereas for most teams, somebody gets to 15 goals, you're like, oh, man, that was a great offensive performance. Right. That, for me, entering 2020, just seems like it's going to be the norm. Yeah. I don't care what you throw at them. Yeah. But the shot clock, they're, they, there's almost no way they don't hit 15. They are the boogeyman. They are the they're, they're the boogeyman. <laughs> Don't want to run into the boogeyman. <laughs> Don't want to run into him at any point. All right. Finally. Finally, we got the werewolf team. Ooh. So the team that might, you know, you get the full moon. I was talking about you guys earlier. I love the moon. It's cool. And, you know, the, the full moon comes out, and, and they get they get a little scary. You know what I mean? And then they, they sort of they start howling. Not all the time they're, they're going to do this, but they're going to surprise somebody, and, and they're going to scare you one night, and, and they're going to knock someone off. And we look at UMass as a team hmm. that, that probably can do do that this year. Uh, Ohio State early on in the schedule. Ohio State should have a really good squad this year once again. Top 10 team for most of last year too and probably should be again this year. Um, and then you look at a team like Yale. Yep. And uh, play hosting Yale this year and Yale we know is going to be good once again. Probably a top five team early in the year. Yeah. And UMass is a team that can do that with some of the guys, the youth they have coming back and you know, they have that gritty kind of feel of uh, the CAA. The CAA and you kind of knock some people off balance. Don't forget last year against Yale, only lost by one in overtime. Well, everyone loses by one in overtime, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But took, him to the, took him to OT. Took him to the brink. Took him to OT. So UMass, that werewolf team, full moon comes out one of these, one of those early weeks against one of those big time teams, and they're going to bite you. Keep an eye on UMass, too, because they returned their top six scorers from a year ago. You got to replace Sean Scannoni in goal and, and some different pieces around the field. Isaac Paparo, obviously. But offensively, they return a bunch. And I think that's good key for continuity. You, you're confident on one end of the field. It can help you kind of develop the other end. I Keep an eye on the minute. Well, well coached as well, which, makes always. Big, which always plays a big always. factor, especially when it comes to an upset. You know they're never going to roll over.